Greetings. Right now I'm going to look at women's roles a bit upon being requested to do this video and this will be more of a summary of past sayings and in particular things that are preached out on the street against churches that have women pastors and we're going to see how the home and the church, although they're not the same thing, problems in the home can then go into the church. And we're going to see how this would make it become a problem of damnation once certain problems go into the church. Okay. And... There are certain limits, you know, for example, you know, Caesar is ordained of God and custom to whom custom, tribute to whom tribute and things like this is not a problem. But once you put Caesar into the house of God, now you're in damnable offense. Okay. And so there is in life these matters in the flesh that we deal with but we cannot allow them to go into the church. So when we talk about the roles of a woman, it's not as if we're not talking about how men are operating because the men have more blame when the women are not doing the role in the church, okay? And what men do being effematized is that they have a problem in their home and instead of handling like a man and entering into the sufferings of Christ, they just allowed into the church to somehow fix the problem. And all they've done is ate and drank damnation on their soul. Okay. Not discerning the Lord's body and allowing sin in the church. Okay. So... For example, if we start perhaps at 1 Timothy 2 and then touch on some things that are issues and where they have met their limit and now this cannot be part of the church. Okay, so for example, here it teaches that in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So now, you know, you're at this level of knowledge and the fear of God. You plainly see these things and you see that your woman is given to broidered hair and costly array and face painting perhaps and things like this. And you can be as charitable as charitable is of charity and to be extremely meek and use soft answer and everything and all those things. But the bottom line is you have to tell her you have to stop doing that. If you'd like to be part of the house of God, you need to repent. And if she does not, then she is not to be part of the fellowship. You are not to pray with her. You can pray for her to repent, but you cannot pray with her. And these are things you must do. You must explain to her how she is on her way to hell. And use whatever words you have to do to do that. But you must allocate that properly. And you must do so in the fear of God and in the second great commandment. To love your neighbor as yourself. And... Those are things that you need to do. And that's what the Holy Spirit's saying. So if you would like to say contrary to that, or you would like to quiet the Spirit of God in you, quench the Spirit, grieve the Spirit of God, you'll get what you have done coming back to you. You know? Now, what men do instead is that they take this into the house of God. Now, in verse 8, I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Well, if you go into church and you think you're going to lift up holy hands and you know your wife is sinning at home 
and not listening to you. And she might even go into church just like that. So now it's open for all. You are in doubt, sinner. Okay? Don't think that you don't have doubt. You do. And you might have a seared conscience. You might have defiled conscience. You might have different things and deceptions. But deep down, you know that at the very best you have is doubt. And your hands aren't holy. Okay. You know. And that's the bottom line. So you failed Christ. You know, and now if you're an elder or a bishop, you need more problems, but you know it yourself and you could have disfellowship with this person. So you know it yourself. Okay. But now if you're not a bishop and your wife's even doing this in the church, you have just brought a problem to the bishops. So now you've sowed a temptation to the bishops and the devil could use that as a temptation on them. And the bishops and their men of God just get rid of both of you. Both of you have had it here. Both of you are given over to Satan. And we pray that God would move this way in those that have been set forth in this because these men have been given for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I would like to hear things like this being done and I would be edified by them. Okay. Myself personally, I would find edification there that there's men of God going to do what is right. And they're going to put more blame on that man. Okay. And what this does is it shows that as the truth of God to do that. Because this man had an opportunity to do what was right. But also, it's a great shield against those that like to, in a feminist spirit, talk about chauvinism. It's a great defense of that as a shield against it. Okay. And if someone like to take out that sword, it would just thrust into their own heart. Okay. Bless God. Now... For example, a loud woman. We have many things about this. Women in the church, when there's a leading of worship and divine service, teachings, proclamation, if there's a word of wisdom or anything like this, women aren't even supposed to be talking. Okay, and this is the simple reading of these things. You know, when we talk about a prophetess or something of this manner, we can have that discussion. But we're talking about leading, we're talking about teaching, we're talking about words of wisdom, we're talking about still teaching, you know. There is no place for women to be teaching or take authority over the men. You know, we see this in 1 Timothy 2 and 1 Corinthians 14. It's just not happening, okay? So... If it is happening, we know that those people are not saved. Okay, they're just not saved. And if you don't understand that, it's because you're not saved. Okay, and it's not some sort of knowledge that is mystic or something. This is all based on intellect. Okay, it's not hidden. Okay, this is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, did the word of God just come to you? Did it just came out of you? I mean... Where's the word of God coming from? Well, at this exact point in 1 Corinthians 14, it's coming from Paul. So if a man will be ignorant, let him be ignorant, which is to say, let it be known and let it be truthful and let it be abrupt if it has to be. Let it be upfront that that man is ignorant of God. Okay. And that's it. Now, I touched on makeup. I want to get into this in a particular before I go into 1 Corinthians 14. The reason why makeup is a sin is because you have to go by nature, right? So a woman could have on some sort of makeup for colors and she could say, well, it's all natural, it's good for me. Okay, there's nothing wrong with putting natural things on your face that are good for your skin to nourish the body is understandable. And you might have a radiance about your skin, okay, in these things because of health, because 
it's natural because this is how God made us and these things is perfectly fine. But when you go with colors, you've gone a different level, okay, because some things are entirely unnatural. And we have to look at, like, if I put on colors on my face, people will say it's gay, all right, and they're right. It's not of God, okay? It's it's not hetero, okay? Because that's not how you would attract women as a man, okay? So it's not right, all right? And for a woman, though, it's in our culture, and a culture doesn't deem anything, it's for sex appeal or something like this to men, but it's not of God, okay? And what you're doing is you're going against nature, okay? And you're not as how God made you with the colors like that, okay? Because you're changing the way your skin looks, you understand? It's a difference with clothing, okay, in different colors. It's a difference like in the New Jerusalem with the colors and the emeralds and, you know, the precious stones and things like this. And Joseph had coat with many colors, but it's not those things because in this is a skin you know you're almost bridging into the territory of tattoos okay you're almost going there i'm not saying you're going there with just colors on your skin but we all know what you're doing and it's not right and that's why when men do it it's more profound because culture hasn't really touched that okay we know what type of culture is in that sort of thing when men do that all right and it goes for other things, but when you can't be as God made you, then you have a problem, okay? And that's why women, they have to use colors and paint face because they don't like the way they are from God, all right? And it's sin, all right? So let's see. This is a big problem now. We talk about men effeminate and women Jezebel is because... What I would say is an extension here is that women are supposed to ask their husbands at home. And that's why if you have a man and a woman who claim to be saints, then I do think there is these situations where a woman could have been in the faith a lot longer, have been sitting under a godly pastor or a godly father and have learned lots of things. And a man who is a new convert who marries this woman might not know all those different things. But the woman, if she has a question, she still needs to ask her husband at home because it's a matter of headship. It's a matter of things being done decently. Because if need be, this humble man of God who is born again can ask this pastor, can ask this teacher, could ask an evangelist for these answers and then relay them to his wife. Okay, so everything must be done decently and in order. And then this man knows that these men of God who are over to this fellowship, they respect me as a man, okay? They respect me as a man of God that I can receive questions from my wife and if I don't know the answer, I can go to the Holy Spirit or I can allow the Holy Spirit to work through these men and I can get the answer for my wife and give it to her. And now that thing is done decently, and that's why God makes sense in all things. You cannot ever find fault with God. No matter what you try to do, your bows will be broken. Okay? Don't shoot at the perfect sinner. Okay? And who's losing out there? No one. Okay? No one's losing. Okay? The... Wife is getting what she needs. The man is getting what he needs. The church is doing what they're supposed to be doing. And everyone's following what the Holy Spirit has said. And there's many different things that be, can be said about different scenarios and different things. But, you know, we're just looking at some things here, you know. So lastly, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, this is how intense it is, guys, you know, when man and woman are in play, because people say, well, man and woman are both created. You're not Jesus. Okay. You know, and I've talked about this before. We realize we're not Jesus. We're supposed to be as Jesus. Jesus is God. So when Jesus tells us to be as him, he's not telling us to become God. 
All right, so already your point is nullified, all right? Now, to further explain your damnation for you is that Jesus is under the Father, and they're both God. So you want Jesus as God? Now you got him as God. He's under the Father. He listened to the Father. He feared the Father. He obeyed the Father. He was subject to the Father. And this for your damnation of your soul on the day of judgment as a witness against you, sinner, both man and woman, Okay, because if you think you're going to go into the church of God and have women leading you, you are against Jesus Christ. And in fact, you're against the father because you are in a position of the father here. Okay, as a man, right? You're in a position of Jesus over the apostles. You're in this position. Okay. If you don't want to do it, if you want to have women teaching in your fellowship, if you want to have these sort of things that a woman is going to try to lead your home and then you're going to pray with her and you're going to act like she's a saint and you're going to do these things, you are against Jesus. And Jesus Christ abhors you. And there's no doubt in my mind about this because what good is his obedience to the Father then? What good is the Apostle Paul? Why did Paul say this? You know, what good is it? So this is just a matter of headship, plain and simple. And we all know that the devils are going to struggle day and night with these women and these effeminates to get people not to do this. And this is why you just have such clear abomination that women are teaching in church. It's just all over. It's so clear. And then they don't even think about this. And they want to talk about culture and all these things. And they just bonded the Holy Ghost which they can't even do. You know, it's, they can't even do that. The word of God is not bound. They can't even do it, but they, they do it. And they've just done it in a deception in their mind. It's something they can't do and they think they've done it. Now that's a bad deception. That's strong, okay? So, yeah, I mean, all sin... has to be judged and all righteousness is sin but i gotta tell you this sort of sin i mean you can't i mean you can't white glove it you know i agree with you know a soft tongue breaks the bones and soft answer and all these things and that's wisdom but even in doing so there's no sugar coating in the judgment you know i mean about the verdicts here so those are just a few things I would like to say in this video. Praise God.